Good evening, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Susan Campfield here. SueStampfield.com. Oh, dang it. Oh, I forgot my water, you guys. I have it down on the counter <laughs> in the kitchen. Goodness. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Happy, happy Valentine's Day. Uh, welcome to my craft room. We're going to um, just create and share together. I'm checking to make sure I've got my microphone plugged in. I'm going to pull it closer to the camera because I know sometimes I'm a little far from that. So seeing some, some questions in the comments. So good to see you all here. Mary asked if I have designed a stamp set yet. I have not, Mary. Um, when you hit your million dollars in career sales with Stampin' Up, you get to design your own stamp set. I am not there yet. Um getting closer. I'm, I'm getting close to my 900,000 uh, milestone marker. So someday I'll get there and you guys can help me design my set. Won't that be fun? Um, but welcome. I, you guys have some yummy things. It looks like here. I'm uh, seeing chocolate chip cookies. I'm seeing apple pizza. Do you need to get apple pizza? Mm, that sounds so good. Uh, PDF today, Gina Marie is asking, uh, Gina Marie, I just sent out the project sheet email. When did that go, like, go out? You guys, um, what day is this <laughs> Tuesday? Not yesterday, right? Yesterday, I think. Yes, it went out yesterday. Finally. So uh, a couple new project sheets uh, dropped in your inbox yesterday. Um, if you do, do not currently subscribe, you can do so right here at suestampfield.com. Click on subscribe. And it's just if you want some creative inspiration dropped into your inbox, um, I often pair those uh, project sheets with uh, past videos that we've done. Um, takes me a while, so we usually don't send one out every week. Um, we'll see. We'll see how we go. There'll probably be one more here in February. So go ahead and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. And when you subscribe, you get a welcome letter that has some free project sheets in it just to get you started, get you off the uh, jumped in right away. So, um, so welcome everyone. So glad that you're here. Um, I am going to, uh, you got the email, Linda got the email. Awesome. Excellent. Rainy and cold in California. It has been raining all day here in Minnesota. It's, you know, cold, but not terribly cold. Um, it's supposed to turn cold tonight, which means all this rain is going to turn to snow and ice and all the fun things. So, so oh, hot tea and cheesecake. Oh, Lisa, that sounds amazing. I'm so jealous. We are, we haven't eaten yet. Um, I have, we're having beef tips. They're in the crock pot cooking away with some portobello mushrooms and some onions, a uh, little red wine, uh, beef broth. And uh, we'll have that on mashed potatoes. I cheated. I bought the, <laughs> the already made mashed potatoes from the store. So I'll pop those in the oven when we're done and crescent rolls. And I've got some um, I haven't decided yet. I've got broccoli, Parmesan uh, broccoli that we can do with like the roasted broccoli. Do you know what I mean? Where you do panko crumbs and broccoli and or parmesan and then you roast it. So I, I might skip that. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how we go. So, uh, so good to have you all here tonight. We're going to make a gorgeous card and it's gorgeous because we're using some gorgeous products, right? So gorgeous products equal gorgeous cards. So uh, I hope it provides you with some inspiration. Hold on one sec. I'm going to request my water. I'll be right back. I'm already thirsty. Okay, I have made my request. <laughs> All right, everybody. Ah, so why do I need a beverage? I need a beverage because, oh, shepherd's pot pie, gluten-free chocolate cake and ice cream. Oh, Linda, you guys are making me hungry. Um, uh, the reason I requested a, uh, my beverage be brought up to me, like hand delivered tonight, um, is because we play a little game here at Sue Stanfield. I make a mess when I craft. I just do. I get 
stuff everywhere and then I lose what's on my desk. I just had it. It's right there. I know it's there, but I lose it. So when we lose it and then we find it again, we say found it and we all take a sip of our beverage. And I was tempted to have a bottle, a glass of wine tonight, but we're going to go ice water here. So, um, so yes, I am super excited to get started with our project. Let's go ahead and switch the camera uh, down to the desktop here. Here we go. All right, there's my desktop and you can see these are, this is one of the projects that went out. Thank you so much, Joe. Appreciate it. Got it. All right, so I am all set now, everyone. I can just lose things at will. <laughs> Here, I'll just to give a little toast to y'all. Cheers, I've got my found it cup. I've got ice water in there. Let me know what's in your cup tonight if you didn't already. Whoops, I gotta change cameras again. Back to the desk. So the last video, we did this super cute um, shamrock shake card, hard to say fast, with a gift pocket on the back for a McDonald's gift card so that the person can go get a shamrock shake. Uh, one of my viewers on, um, uh, in the Facebook group, the Susie Upfield Facebook group, by the way, anyone can join us over there, come hang out with us on Facebook, uh, said that Arby's has a really good mint, uh, mint chocolate shake. So that's on my list of things to try. <laughs> so pineapple upside down cheesecake, mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Um, so this was our shamrock shake. And then after the video, I finished off this version. We had a debate in the video on whether we were going to have the top be white or uh, be green ice cream. And I think we made this one, didn't we? Um, so after the video, I made this one, I stamped the ice cream off. So that's mint macaron ink, but I stamped it off to get the lighter color, kind of like we did on the glass, little dollop of whip on top. And I think that came out really cute. So I, you know, there's no wrong answer there. This uh, card, it collapses flat, fits in a normal envelope. You do need to be a little careful with your stem <laughs> of your cherry and your straw so that they don't extend beyond the card because then they're not going to fit in the envelope. So you're going to want to angle this. So yep, you can see I got a little problem with my straw here. I just push it down and it's all good. So uh, that is the standing pop-up card is what that's called. That project sheet went out in yesterday's email. The other one that went out in yesterday's email was this one. Uh, this one, this one. Oh, you guys haven't even seen this one yet. <laughs> so unless you get the email. So we, uh, this one, this is the uh, latching gatefold card. Opens up like that. It's got the little latch and inside we've got the happy birthday wishes. So uh, we did a video with a Valentine version of this card which is right here with the little owl with the bow tie. So you flip the latch and then open up the gatefold. This is the other project sheet that uh, went out because it was so close to Valentine's. I decided to do uh, a non-Valentine one just to give you more inspiration. These are the adorable owl stamp set. We are running down on, on, a, on a celebration. If you hadn't, haven't picked up your free owl set, it's free with a $50 purchase. Um, you might want to do that. Well, we could start running out of things very soon. We, they have added some more selections as well. So tonight we're going to go, um, we've been doing some really cute, fun things, but tonight we're going to go flowery and pretty because... Oh, I love my flowers. Anyone else love flower cards? <laughs> so we're going to use a gor gorgeous bundle called Two Tone Flora. This is from the mini catalog. I'm sure Jennifer will tell us what page it's on. Oh, hey. Hey, Jennifer Walsh. My moderator, Jennifer Walsh, is here with us tonight. She's hanging out and helping us out with measurements and dimensions and, and dropping things in the comments that are helpful. And um, if I don't see your question, feel free to give Jennifer a shout out. So this is uh, this is the bundle in the back of the catalog, by the way, the mini catalog. Um, it has all of the bundles and there's a second sample back there. And sometimes it's the cutest one. I mean, look at that ice cream one. That is stinking cute. And I kind of forget there's another sample back here in that kind of index section. But this is the bundle that we're playing with tonight. Uh, you can find everything in that collection on page 16 of your mini catalog. 16. 
right here. So, uh, well, that's that one. It's actually also on pages 14 and 15 because it's a whole big suite. And there's actually two bundles in this suite. We have done a lot with the Something Fancy bundle. It is really fun. We haven't done a whole lot with this one yet. So we're going to we're gonna correct that oversight tonight. So uh, let's go ahead and let's get this party going. Okay. So got that there. We've got this here. I'm going to put these aside and let's see. I am thirsty, so I haven't lost anything yet, but I'm going to take a sip because I can. And then if you could let me know how the sound is, I am stretching my microphone a little bit closer to my camera because it's usually kind of off to the side where my computer is. And I'm hoping you can hear me better. So we're going to start by die cutting. Um, that involves Susan moving some stuff on her. <laughs> I've got hordes and piles of stamps. Now I'm jiggling the camera. Pretty much, you know, we're off to our usual shenanigans here at Sue Stamp Field. Things are getting crazy. I'm going to bring in the big machine. Hello, big machine. That's why I was trying to clear some space. Normally, I keep this across the room because it, it does take up quite a bit of space. But I need it because I like to use the mini one. But this one is not going to fit in the mini machine. This super duper um, huge mungus die. Huge mungus, is that a word? Well, it is tonight. Huge mungus die is the one that we're using. So we're going to pull that out. You know, I'm pretty proud of myself that I was <laughs> able to Rubik's Cube and fit all of these dies on this uh, magnet sheet because it wasn't easy. Uh, but I knew there had to be a way, right? So I am taking a five and a quarter. No, what is it? Five and a half by four and a quarter piece of cardstock. So basically it is your postcard size. It's a fourth of a standard eight and a half by 11 sheet. Okay. So you're drinking coffee for your sip. Good choice. So we're going to go ahead and um, die cut this huge die. Now this is extremely detailed die. It may not all cut in the first go and that's okay. I'll show you what to do when that happens. We're going to crank it through here. Um, when you're die cutting, whether you're using the big machine or the mini machine, you always want to put your handle on top and press down. That gives you uh, pressure for uh, the machine, keeping it in place, but also helping uh, you crank things through. This is a big die, and so it does take a little extra muscle to crank it through because it's, it's a huge piece of metal. <laughs> All right, so I've got this. Um, I don't even know if that cut all the way. It really looks good. But just for a little insurance, I am flipping the entire thing around. I'm going to keep it together. And I'm turning it around so now it's on the left side. And I'm going to send it through again. Just in case. Just for a little extra. It's much easier to go through this time. And let's see how we did flip it around here. Okay, I can tell that I did not get this upper part. This did not cut for me. So I am going to keep it right in the die that I was in. I am going to get these little bits. That most of it cut. There's just one little spot that didn't. Part of the reason that didn't cut might be because my, my uh, cutting plate is getting very scarred up. The more scarred up it is, the harder it is for it to cut. I am going to, so I now have the die cutting edge face up. I flipped it over and I'm going to send it through again. Let's see if we, <laughs> I'm having trouble cranking because I have a stack of ink pads that we're using tonight. Right where the handle goes. That really wasn't very bright of me, was it? All right three times through, but it's going to be worth it. Oh yeah, that looks much better. So sometimes if you're having trouble with a certain die cutting, if you flip it over so that cutting edge is up, then you get, um, you, you know, your, your cutting edge is then closer to the, the roller that puts the pressure on it. So that looks good to me. I'm going to pull this aside. I made a big old mess. <laughs> 
So we know we're doing it right if we're making messes, right guys? That's how we roll around here. So I'm gonna grab my little um, take your pick brush. Okay, this is the take your pick tool with the die brush attachment. The die brush attachment comes with two of these um, spongy things. And it's just kind of like a gripper so that when you roll the die brush over these really intricate dies, um, it the sponge kind of grabs the little um, the little chads uh, uh, of paper and uh, hangs on to them. This looks pretty good. All right, what did I miss, guys? There's one up here. That's pretty clean. Oh, one little tiny one right there. All right, oh, isn't it gorgeous? Okay, took three times through, but oh my gosh, was that worth it? <laughs> that is a wow, a wow die for sure. I'm gonna get those bits into the trash can. Okay, most of them went in. <laughs> some of them, some of them, uh, some of them dropped on the floor. So. All right, so we've got this gorgeous showcase piece now. We're not going to have to do much heavy lifting on this card, but we're going to add some fun stuff because we can, right? So let me bring in my card base. My card base is five and a half by four and a quarter. I know that seems a little weird for a card base size, but that's what it is. So I'm going to lay it in my paper trimmer. Uh, not my paper trimmer. This is called a simply scoring tool, not a paper trimmer. And uh, all it does is score, but it does a great job of scoring. And I think, I got to think here, I want to score this at four and a quarter with the five and a quarter inch across the top. So the five and a half inch side is over here for five and a quarter across the top. And I'm scoring it at four and a quarter. Okay, we can move this out of our way now. That's a great, uh, a, a great thought, Janine. Um, this makes a beautiful mask. You can cut one of these and use it for a ton of cards by just inking all over it and then lifting it off and having a beautiful floral behind. Oh. Hmm. I thought I did such a great job cleaning that out. Now I see a bunch of things I missed. Not a bunch, but this one right here goodness. Can't have that. All right. All better. Did I get them all now? One over there too. Oh my goodness. All right. Good thing I'm not drinking wine. <laughs> all right. So let's take our card base here and we're going to fold on this uh, score line that we made. So this is going to give us a standard card base with just a little one inch flap in the front. And we're going to adhere our card, our, uh, our beautiful floral piece to that one inch flap. And that's actually going to become the whole front of our card. Now, what we could have done. So this die, let me, ex let me tell you a little bit more about this die here. Let's see if I can get some of the paper out of it. It, it does not cut the outer edge. It only cuts the inner lacy parts. So it will cut you know, whatever your card base size is. So that was why I cut this piece uh, five and a half by four and a quarter, because um, it just cuts out the inside of that section. And you need it to be at least that big if you want to cover the whole piece, All right? So we're going to adhere this to our paper. Now, I could have actually added a strip of um, adhesive uh, sheet to my uh, my five and a quarter, five and a half by four and a quarter inch piece and die cut it. And then I would have adhesive over here. I didn't do that. So I'm going to do the other option, which is good old multi-purpose liquid glue. And I want to adhere this, but remember, I only want to adhere it to this one inch spine. I don't want to adhere it in here. I'm going to glue my card closed. So I'm going to make sure that when I apply my glue, and I'm just applying it on the outside border for now, um, that I'm mostly just going down the edge and then in about, oh, and I got it on the desk. Excellent. <laughs> That's right. Comes right off. Um, I'm just going to come over about three quarters of an inch. I am going to add a little bit of glue here in the parts where I know it's going to be um, on that one inch uh, spine part. I have a dot there. You don't need to get too crazy. This is going to hold really well as we have it. So 
I'll just add in a little few more dots there where I can. All right. So we've got our liquid glue again with liquid glue. A dot is a lot, a lake is a mistake, and a thin line is just fine. So I've done a thin line for the most part and a few little dots over here. Um, and now I, it's easier for me if I open my card base back up and adhere this to it. Okay. All right, so now we can fold up our beautiful, gorgeous, lacy card. Oh my goodness, it's already drop dead gorgeous and we didn't do anything to it yet. But we're gonna add a little bit of ink in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and score this or crease this with my bone folder just so it lays nice and flat because we only have that one inch flap. You do wanna score that, uh, crease that really well so that it's um, it lays nice and flat. So there we have the start to a gorgeous, gorgeous card, right? Jennifer is sharing the dimensions with us. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, let's see. I wonder if it'll let me. Nope, it won't. That's all right. I forgot to type them up to show you at the end. So um, pretty simple as far as dimension goes on this card though. So hopefully we're good here. So that is our card base. <clears throat> now we're going to make it even more pretty. <clears throat> there goes my voice. I better lose something. I need a sip of water. All right. So let's look at our options here. Um, I, got, I got stuff. Hang on. I got stuff everywhere. All right. I'm going to grab a piece of scrap. Uh, I would tell you the size, but I don't know. I literally just grabbed it off of my cutting desk. It's just a scrap of basic white here. I'm going to die cut some flowers. So I'm going to do, oh gosh, let's go Calypso Coral. This suite of products um, has a absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous collection of paper in it. Um, it's called uh, Fancy Flora and it is beautiful watercolor designs. I'm not even using it on this card, but I'm kind of picking up the same colors. Oh, I have a card to show you. I totally forgot. So we talked about the latching gatefold with the owls. I showed you that. I did a latching gatefold with this collection. Um, so this is the fancy flora paper I was just talking about. This is the flowers that we're about to stamp. You've got your latch here and it opens up like this. And then some more of that pretty, um, pretty uh, paper on the inside. It says nothing fancy, just love, but it is pretty fancy actually. <laughs> So I'm not sure if that's the right sentiment, but um, so just uh, give you a little sneak peek of what we're doing here. So we're going to take um, from this stamp set. Oh my gosh, Susan. How did I lose the stamp set? I just had it in. Oh, found it. All right. Let's take a little sip. Oh, good. Because I was getting really thirsty. Ah, that's refreshing. Okay. So good question. Joe Phillips, Susan can clarify. Don't you mean score at four and a quarter? I do mean, what did I say, Joe? Oh my goodness. Did I say it wrong or did I have it wrong on the graphic? Um, it was, it was five and a half or five and a quarter by five and a half with five and a quarter across the top. And I scored it at four and a quarter. You could actually score it at an inch too. You could do either. Wouldn't matter. Now I'm probably just making it more confusing. All right. So I'm doing the biggest rose in this set or flower, the solid one. Oh no, I don't want to do the solid one first. Hang on, hang on. Okay, it, that one's just going to chill out for a minute. I want the detailed one first. I am super weird, you guys. Um, the two-step stamping, I have really poor eyesight and two-step stamping works a lot better for me if I'd stamp the detail part first because the detail part is usually darker ink. That's how I did the glass there. And then I, it's easier for me to see it when I uh, line up the one with the lighter ink over it. I hope that makes sense. Probably doesn't. But um, Jennifer has corrected my boo-boo. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Scoring it at four and a quarter. Thank you. All right. So I am inking this up in Calypso Coral ink. There we go. So that's the solid part of my flower. Now I'm going to ink up the, um, it doesn't seem very dark to me. Hmm. I might need to re-ink this. Well, we'll see how we go. I might stamp it again. Now I've, I've inked up this, the solid part in the same color, but if I stamp it over that, it's 
gonna this is gonna disappear so i'm gonna stamp this on a scrap paper first that's gonna remove a lot of the ink from the stamp and now i'm going to stamp it over the flower and it's just going to give me that same color just a little bit lighter so this is a great way to maximize the ink pads that you have because when you stamp them off you have a second ink and i'm just lining it up with the part i already stamped and there i have my beautiful two-tone flower it is so much easier for me to line it up when i do the detailed part in the dark color first I hope that makes sense. All right, so we're gonna, let's, you know what, we got more room on here. Let's add some more flowers. Why not? We're gonna grab Orchid Oasis, which is another color in this paper that we're not even using on this card. <laughs> and I'm gonna start once again by um, stamping these little kind of star flowers. Those are the, the detailed middle. This is the um, solid background. So I did that in solid Orchid Oasis. Now I'm going to take this in Orchid Oasis and I'm going to stamp it off on my scratch paper. And now I'm going to line up my stamps over those. I got to pull it towards me, guys. You can see it probably really good, but I'm off camera. Hang on. I think that's good. I don't know. Let's try it. Be a little off there. Yeah, I think it was a little off. Hang on, hang on. I am a perfectionist, so talk amongst yourselves. I'll try it again here. All right, I'm going to move the camera up <laughs> and towards me so that I can see better. Oh my gosh, you guys, seriously, I have such horrible eyesight. All right, there's the center of that flower. There's There are little centers of the flowers that I can line up. I might have it flipped around. Oh, that's it. I had it backwards. All right, so there's, can you see the little dots in the center of the flowers? I'm lining up those little dots with these little dots. And they line up perfectly when you have the stamp in the right direction. <clears throat> And I just hover over it until I'm lined up and then I press it down. <gasps> so much better. So this is stamped correctly. This is stamped wrong. <laughs> All right. So I've got those. And then I'm going to do one more. I want a little bit of leaf action. So I'm going to grab soft succulent. So Clepso Coral Orchid Oasis. And let's grab. Can I remove the banner, please? Well, it, heck yeah, I can do that. There we go. Thank you, Joe. All right. Okay, so we're going to grab our soft succulent and we're going to ink this up and we'll just stamp it right here. Now you might notice that under my stamping, I have the cushion. This is the stamp and pierce mat. <gasps> I just got a brand new one because mine were all really ugly and ink on them and everything else. And I thought those aren't very pretty for videos. I should get a new one. So these are in the catalog. Um, Jennifer found them for us last time. I bet she can do it again. So there we have our flowers. Let's go ahead and die cut these out. I'm going to set all this. Well, you know what? I better close up my ink pads before I get in trouble and put something important in there. I also see a dog here in this one. So I'm going to pull that out. The banner was in the way of what I was doing. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry about that. All right. So, all right, we've got these all stamped. We're ready to I cut them out. You guys kind of missed how I lined up that flower. So let's do it one more time. You know what? We might decide we want two things of flowers on this. So with these little, this little um, group of flowers, I stamp the centers in full strength Orchid Oasis and then I ink up the um, solid part and I'm going to rotate the stamp so I have it the right direction. There's three flowers in a row and one off to the side so that's matching up with that. I'm going to stamp it on my scrap paper and now in the inside there's little um, circles in the center of each flower and I'm going to line those up with the circles in the centers of the detail and stamp. And that's how you line that one up. In case you missed that, 
you have starry sky, you need orchid oasis. Orchid oasis is a little more on the purple side. It is a beautiful color. All right, so we're going to put this aside and we're going to do some die cutting. I, <laughs> you know what? I don't have to bring in the little machine or I can bring in the little machine instead of clearing off a spot for the big machine. Let's do that. This is the, um, the mini machine. Um, that is special. This one is in boho blue. The one in the catalog is in white. It costs $65. It is mini but mighty. It will um, cut and emboss anything that will fit um, across the width. The big flowery, a big lacy die would not fit in this little guy. So that's why I use the other one. Um, when you're using your mini machine, you do want to stagger your plates like this. So you want the center one just tucked back a little bit and that will give you the best um, cutting. So I'm just gonna pull that back a little bit from the white one and let's lay these on here. Now, I am just gonna cut these for starters. So Susan, that would require some dies. Okay, they're here somewhere. Ah, I found them, they were under the stamp set. Let's take a little sip, everybody, cheers. Mm. So this mini machine, Jennifer is mentioning in the comments that this mini machine in the boho blue is only available through the starter kit. Um, right now there is an amazing starter kit deal going on. If you, uh, you get $175 in products for $99, or if you want to throw in this little mini machine, you get $175 in products plus a mini machine for only, uh, uh, what is it, Jennifer? I gotta look at what you put, um, $129. So it, it is amazing, amazing deal. Um, I'm gonna just, why is this not lining up? Because you've got it backwards. I'm gonna line up the dies uh, with their matching flowers here. And let's get our leaf one here. I'm a little bit off camera, sorry about that. That was my boo-boo one, so I'm not cutting it out. It's not terrible. You probably could get away with it, but as I said, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So if I can be closer to perfect, that's usually my choice. So I like to, when I am doing um, exact die cutting where I'm uh, cutting a stamped image and I want it exact, I like to line them up and then slap a post-it note on it to keep them from shifting on me. All right, where are the post-it notes? Oh, wait, here we go. Uh, there we go, under an ink pad. We got the post-it notes. All right, cheers, everybody. Take a little sip. Mm. We found it. <laughs> You've done a mirror image with that mat. Oh, where you stamp on it. Oh, cool. I've done that with the silicon mat, but not with the stamp and pierce mat. Oh, goodness, I just moved it. Hang on. Hold the phone. I'm sticking it where I don't want it. There we go. So you know what the drawback is to cooking things in the crock pot? It makes your house smell so yummy. <laughs> way, way, way before it's ready to eat. <laughs> and so by the time it's finally ready, you're like absolutely starving. Did that ever happen to anybody else? All right, so we've got those on there. And let's put this on the top and tuck that back one in and we're going to send this through can't send it through with an, a stamp under my handle which means i can't crank it come on there we go all right now it can do it crunchily crackly that just means it's doing the right things right it's doing the right things all right you're new to stamping. Is there a trick to minimizing the warping of the stamping plates? Well, that is a really good question. So the stamping plates are, um, they are a, a, a item that needs to be replaced. What's the word I want you guys? Um, consumable item. <laughs> so uh, they will not last forever uh, for a couple reasons. For one reason, they get scarred up. Look how cute. Look how cute. And here's our big flower right here. Um, but here's the trick. You want to flip it. Um, if you flip it every time. So imagine you're sending something through 
um, some heavy rollers. And so eventually, if you keep putting it through heavy rollers, it's going to start what? It's going to start curling. But if you send it through heavy rollers, and then the next time you flip it over and send it through heavy rollers the other way, it actually flattens it back out. So if you flip it every time, your plates will last longer. Eventually, they will need to be replaced, though. All right, how did I lose my flowers, you guys? Seriously. I've got, where did the purple ones go? Oh, there they are. <laughs> Found it! <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Hmm. Ah, so good. All right, so I'm going to chuck this away. This one we might even use. Let's just keep that one in our back pocket in case we want it. All right. Did I lose my card base? I didn't. Ha ha, it's right here. All right, so look at this card base and look at this flower right here does that look familiar to anybody because guess what it is the exact same flower that we just cut it matches up perfectly with that big flower how cool is that um, but i do actually want my little leaves uh, behind it here so i'm not sure how we want it let's we're just going to do a little bit of playing and see where we want that um I don't want them going off the side because that might keep me from going in the envelope. That's pretty cute right there at the bottom. And then I can tuck these back behind here for our little bouquet, or I could have them over here. So many good choices. And I could have the leaves over here. Oh, would you stop bouncing? Oh my goodness. All right, sometimes you have to talk to your paper crafting things to make them behave. <laughs> It's not working for me, is it? All right, I'm going to keep it flat here until I decide where I'm putting things. There's the flower. Okay, you guys are going to have to help me here. Do we want the leaves at the bottom or to the side? Let me know in the comments. I think they either need to be on the right or at the bottom, one of those two. I think I want the purple flowers over here. Let's see here. Let me know in the comments at the bottom or on the side. Let me know your thoughts on the leaves. Leaves on the bottom. All right. Agreed. Let's do it. All right. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to adhere these uh, flowers by just putting a little bit of adhesive right here with this lacy background. Um, there's only so many places that I can put adhesive. I know I'm going to be covering up this whole thing with my flower so i'm going to go ahead and put adhesive all over it and then before i put the flower on i'll put the other flowers and the leaves um, on that area and they're just going to be tucked behind my main flower i hope that makes some semblance of sense i'm going to just tack those on they're just barely grabbing that glue right there and I'm going to tack these in right here, just barely grabbing the glue right there. And then we'll put our bigger one over the top. And I'm going to line it up perfectly with the die. Give it a press here. And there we have our pretty floral card. Now, there's a couple options that we have here for the side. You actually could add a strip of the fancy flora paper to that spine on the one side and cover up your lacy piece. That would be one option. Um, you actually could have done the designer series paper. Let me see if I can just grab. Oh, here's an open pack. Let me see if I can grab some. Let's just grab one. Let's just... <laughs> Let's see. Let's grab one, Sue. Come on. Let's see. Here we go. Grab this one out. So we could have done this whole piece behind and actually adhered it to that one inch uh, strip and then adhered this to, to this piece. Does that make sense? So you'd have this kind of uh, uh, subtle pink behind makes it pop. So many options, you guys. So many options. So uh, you 
may know, may or may not know that I really love a lot of white space. So I actually find this really, really beautiful. Um, you might be wondering how you go about signing and doing a sentiment on the card. You know what? I have this piece of ribbon just hanging out, <laughs> just laying over here. And I think we need to try and see if we need to add this to the side. Um, this is the crinkle ribbon. It is uh, the crinkle uh, basic white ribbon and it's, or is it whisper white? One of those. Um, I'm going to actually wrap it around here. I think I have a, this a long enough piece here to go around two times and then tie a knot. I don't know if I'm going to like it, but let's just, we're just going to try it. We're just going to try it as an option. We might go ew, and then we'll just slide it off, right? If we don't like it. Just gonna tie a knot here. So that's one option is having a, a lacy fringe a ribbon off to the side. You can skip the ribbon all together. Um, I, I don't mind the ribbon. I'm not sure about the long tails though. I want to cut them shorter. I'm going to try cutting them really short. Could also just cut them, even them up and do them a little bit shorter than I have them. Just a little extra, extra on the side. This would make a beautiful wedding card, a beautiful birthday card, a beautiful anything card. So for your inside sentiment. It's gonna show through if you just go stamp something here. So a couple options for you. You could do it on the back of the card, right? Then it could be stood to be displayed with that lacy prettiness in the front. Or you can um, use the other uh, bundle that comes as part of this suite or that's available as part of the suite or on its own or whatever. And I'm just looking at my word options here. So if you were doing this as a wedding card, here's the beautiful uh, beginnings and happily ever after. You could stamp that. Not sure which of these. It fits on several of these dies. Goes, does it go this way? No, it doesn't fit that way. Hang on. I'm looking at my options. So you could put your greeting on here. Ooh, that's really big. Man. So many choices, right? Anyway, my thought was you could put your sentiments um, on the label on the front of the card and then do the slightly smaller label on the inside to write a sentiment or stamp the another greeting. So that would be another option of where to write. I am not sure what I'm doing, so I'm going to leave it um, like this. I really want to add an embellishment though. <laughs> I really want to add, wait, white crinkled seam binding ribbon. Thank you, Jennifer. I knew that was something like that. So yeah, it would make a beautiful, you, Arlene said uh, she would use the Stampin' Blends and color the ribbon to match. Absolutely great idea. You can just totally do that. I would love to add some embellishments to this. If I can find them, <laughs> Well, I know where they are. They're just buried and stuff. Oh my gosh, you guys. Seriously, I need to clean my room. I need to clean my stamp room. Um, let's see what uh, iridescent rhinestones look like in this um, equation. I'm going to grab... Um, these are kind of one of my go-to. All right, what did I do? I have lost my take your pick tool. All right, Oh, come on. I have like three up here. All right. Well, I'm just going to grab my one with my dye brush. So we'll pretend I found it. I didn't really, but this will work. Ah, cheers, everyone. And let's see here. What if you put a white piece behind the lacy part? You totally could put a white. Um, let me see. I can show you what that would look like. Maybe, possibly, perhaps. <laughs> This is too long. I think this is too short, but I'll give you the idea. So yeah, you could actually um, put another piece back here. Um, still really, really pretty and lacy and all of those things, especially if you only attach it to the spine and not um, 
but that would cover up your sentiment as well. That's a great idea. Um, in fact, you could, you could, wait, my ribbon is twisted here. Oh goodness. That's all right. Okay. I'm just flatten it out a little bit. Um, you could, you know what, should we try that? Oh, this, what size is this? Oops. Do I need to trim this down? Actually, this is exactly the right size. I, I, I have I have a thought kind of going along with what Mary said. We could put dimensionals here and attach this, and then we could still have the um, space between the lacy part and the white so that it shows off better. Uh, I'm going to grab this piece. This is a little bit smaller. And I um, and it will still work. So I'm going to go with that instead. Uh, that way it's not going to interfere with my closure here. It's also going to cover up the fact that my, <laughs> my ribbon got totally twisted. Shh, it's our little secret. Nobody will know now, right? We're going to cover that up. So I'm going to put three dimensionals behind our flowers because those aren't going to show, right? And I can see there's a spot over here where I can squash one that's not going to show. And it looks like I can even get a mini or two. Let's grab our mini dimensionals. Oh, you all are so clever. So many fun options, right? I will do one too that has the labels and um, I'll do an alternate for that. Um, and I will post that in our, in the Sea Stampfield Facebook group. Eventually we'll go out in the um, email uh, project sheets when, for those of you who are not, I usually send them out in the email for those of you who are not on Facebook. These I might have to cut in half. I just barely fit. Oh my goodness. These guys have to be cut in half. We can do that. We have that capability, right? Oh, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go finish our Valentine dinner. Oops. Oops. Uh, husband is not home from work yet, but he is due momentarily. And I still need to finish up dinner. Gotta make the crescent rolls, right? Yeah, Valentine's Day without yummy bread of some sort. Okay, my two minis, I cut them in half and they stuck together. <laughs> this is why one should never rush while crafting, right? Because then chaos. I just want a little bit of adhesive at the top, right? So I got a little half a mini dimensional there. And I'm going to stick another little half. Let's see, where can I hide it? About right here. Right there. Okay, let's peel the backing off of all of these. Yeah, I need a little bit more at the top. And I just realized I've got this white space over here. I can totally use that. Totally can use that. <sighs> Would foam strips work around the edges? Absolutely. Probably not those edges because they're really skinny but it went on this longer edge. All right, let's try this. Let's give it a go. All right, I'm just gonna line this up because I want it to cover up that lacy part as much as possible. All right, beautiful. So now we have a little bit of space between the two that gives that shadow effect. And we can open up our card and do our inside sentiment. I maybe would do this just a touch. So this was four by five and a quarter. And you see how it doesn't quite cover up. So I maybe would do four and an eighth by five and three eighths just to get full coverage there. Um, but I do think it it, it's better to have it be a little bit smaller because otherwise you're going to run into a little trouble with your, um, your folding the card. It might interfere. So hopefully that makes sense. But absolutely gorgeous card. Oh, wait, we were going to throw on some embellishments. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. We need the pretties. 
let's do some pretties. You know what? I'm going to do three little pretties in the center of our Hi Winston. I got to whip it in here. I got a dog in here. He says, those beef tips are smelling awfully good. <laughs> so we got a little bling in the middle of the flower. And there we have our beautiful card. And we can do our sentiment inside. Or once again, we could do a sentiment um, on the label and put it on the front. Like this happy birthday I did here would actually look quite nice on that. All right, I might have to finish that up. We're going to call it there, everyone. I'm going to uh, flip the camera. Again, that is the, uh, the um, what's it called? Not something fancy. That's the other one. Oh, I lost the stamp set again. Two-tone flora. Two-tone flora. That's what it is called. The two-tone two -tone flora bundle. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Cheers, everyone. I said, how did I say I found it four and a half times? Oh, what? <laughs> Jennifer said I said it four and a half times. Now I think I just said it a, a fifth, maybe. So uh, cheers, everybody. Mm. Thanks so much for hanging out with me here. Once again, if you would like project sheets for some of the things that I share on these emails, you can sign up for those at suestampfield.com. Click on subscribe and you'll get some free inspiration in your inbox. Have a wonderful rest of Valentine's Day. Happy crafting, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you on our next video, which will be Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. See you then, everyone. Bye-bye.